Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the NIL investigations being halted by the NCAA and the implications of that going down the road. Tons of unknowns there. Um, but it is time to talk about the teams that won the Combine. There are so many teams across college football that were watching tons of their athletes really have really solid days and show that uh, they can develop talent, which is a ton of the battle in the recruiting uh, world. So definitely a big recruiting win for some of these teams. But before we jump into that segment, I do want to remind you all that we get tons of questions and inquiries throughout the show. The best way for you guys to get through to the show and have your um, questions or comments uh, pop up on the screen is to use the link at the bottom of the screen, uh, gsmcpodcast.net. It is a uh, huge help not only to us here at the network, but to you all. If you want to watch and have a fun back and forth, we can definitely do that. So use that link. Again, it's gsmcpodcast.net. But let's jump in. Um, There are so many teams that had great days. There are so many players that had great days. Um, But in the world of college football, recruiting is... 90% of the job, it feels like at this point. Uh, I'm sure coaches would tell you the same. It is absolutely insane the amount of work they have to do, um, whether it's in-home visits or flying around in their helicopters to different uh, high schools or what have you. But luckily for them, uh, around combine time, they get to sit back for a second and let their former players do the work for them. So There are a couple of teams, and they are the teams that you expect um, to be here that had really, really good days that showed that they can develop talent at an elite level. Um, Some teams that struggled with that in the past, and we'll start with one of those teams right now. Uh, Texas had a day. Um, I don't think there's any other way to put it. Let's start, obviously, with Xavier Worthy breaking the 40 time. Never a bad thing for your program to see um your guy up top um and have that as a recruiting pitch although the 40 you know you can weigh the importance of that as you please but um at the very least when every player uh around high school football looks at that list it will be a texas player up top and that means something uh it depends how much to each player but it means something um let's start with the defensive side of the ball byron murphy and tavondre sweat did their thing. Um, I, I don't think there was any worry about either of these guys uh, necessarily slipping too, too much, but Tavondre Speck came in at 366. It's a big weight to be uh, moving around in, and uh, he had some questions to answer, and I think he ticked off all the boxes. Obviously, nothing was overly elite when you look at the vertical or the uh, 40-yard dash, but I think going through workouts, he showed teams what they needed to see. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. And then Byron Murphy was one of the best D linemen in the entire day. I mean, he did pretty much everything across the board incredibly well. There were a number of guys that had him already in the top 15 uh, that came away from that thinking maybe he's a little bit too low. Uh, So he might have played himself into the top 12. I know uh, the Broncos are looking for some trade packages. So it could be a very interesting day for Byron Murphy. Uh, I think he goes somewhere between 10 and 20, but we'll see because uh, there's a big difference between that number 10 pick money and number 20 pick money for sure. But uh, uh, otherwise, Jalen Ford had a solid day. Um, didn't necessarily do anything spectacular, but um, I think he's someone that, if not drafted in the late rounds, could go as an undrafted free agent. And then... Uh, JT Sanders had a great day, uh, was one of the better pass catching tight ends out there, showed a ton in the route tree work because in tight ends, uh, today, they're going to put a lot on you in the passing game. And JT Sanders obviously had to run a ton of routes in Steve Sarkeesian's offense. So plenty comfortable doing that. Um, another, the other pass catchers, AD Mitchell was the guy. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. He did everything as elite as you possibly could have hoped from him uh, and really solidified himself into the first round and possibly pretty high in the first round. There have been a lot of differing reports, but uh, at the very least, if he's there at 32, the Chiefs, I feel like, will be taking him. And then Xavier Worthy, 
Um, there's some mock drafts out there that have uh, have him going 32 to the Chiefs. So um, both these guys just had great days. Obviously, Worthy ran the 40 and then uh, was doing interviews the rest of the time. But um, sometimes that's all you need when you have enough good game tape out there like Worthy has. But uh, some off-the-radar guys for Texas. Keelan Robinson had a really good day and I think played himself into a draft pick. Christian Jones and Ryan Watts the same. Ryan Watts especially really showed off um, his athletic ability when I think there were a couple of Texas fans that were surprised that he uh, left a little bit early, but he really showed out and probably um, almost definitely, I think, played himself into the draft. But let's keep moving here. I think the team that won the day, the team that had the best day across the board is Florida State. Um, and that comes as no surprise. I mean, obviously, a fantastic team that was losing a lot of guys uh, this year. So um, it starts, obviously, with uh, Jared Verse, um, just a freak, <laughs> an absolute freak of nature. I've seen um, a mock draft with him going to the Falcons, and it seems more and more that uh, my hometown team will be going with an edge rusher. So if they do, I'd be more than happy with Jared Verse being that guy. Um, Trey Benson, uh, the running back, had a very good day, ran a 4-3-9 answered a ton of questions, did a lot of really, really good work um, throughout his workout. And in that running back class, I'm sure there's someone out there that has him as running back one right now. Um, and then Keon Coleman had a solid day. There were tons of wide receivers that had pretty remarkable days, so not exactly sure where he falls in the pecking order. Probably somewhere in the Xavier Worthy, Ladd McConkey group, um, I would assume. But who knows, uh, but had a really solid day, showed off his uh, physical ability. Um, but the guy that sold the show, and I think we all saw it, was uh, Braden Fisk. Uh, he was just remarkable going through every single workout. He was remarkably explosive. His change of direction was just absurd for a guy that size. He gets as low as can be. I know some of you saw the overlap between him and Byron Murphy going through um, the bags workout, and Man, Braden Fisk got all the way to the ground before uh, exploding through that last turn. So there is uh, a ton to like about this kid. His motor is off the charts. Uh, he is loves football. Uh, there's no two ways about that. That dude plays with an aggression that uh, is inspiring to a lot of young kids, I'm sure. Um, and then some other guys. Uh, Jerry and Jones had a good day. Uh, ran a really fast 40, so if you're a corner, um, that is a good little moniker to help teams uh, take a flyer on you later in the draft, so I think he will definitely get picked. I think Johnny Wilson, it was going to be hard to pass over a 6'7 wide receiver, I won't lie with you, uh, lie to you, but uh, he showed off his ability, he did his thing, and I think uh, he will definitely be uh, probably a day three draft guy, but plenty talented, and when you're 6'7, you can do a whole lot of things. Uh, and then Jaheim Bell, the tight end, uh, showed his versatility, did a ton of really, really good things. We've talked about this tight end group. It, it feels like it only gets stronger every single day, but uh, Jaheim Bell is one of those guys, kind of like Jatavian Sanders, where kind of more of a pass-catching wide receiver type tight end um, that has been kind of taking over the NFL um, the last little bit. So uh, Jaheim Bell, I think, had a really good day, and um, probably another uh, third day pick, um, if I had to guess. But a great end to a great year for Florida State. Obviously, tons of uh, outside stuff, the, the playoff drama, um, the battle with the ACC, opting out during the Georgia game that did not necessarily go to their liking. Um, but at the end of the day, Florida State had a very, very solid day and helped themselves continue to build what they started a, a year ago. And then let's get to the big dogs. And by that, I mean the Georgia Bulldogs. They had a day. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone out there. I think um, the only negative to um, Georgia's day was some people said that Brock Bowers came off a little bit um, quiet or just didn't come off quite as well as he would have hoped in the interviews. And I think... Um, Knowing, uh, you know, Brock Bowers through watching press conferences and different things, the dude's a very introverted guy. Um, he is not overly comfortable talking to a big group of people. That is very obvious. Um, so I don't think this is necessarily a 
detrimental thing. I don't think it hurts him at all. I just think it's kind of the way he is. Uh, but you know when you get him on the football field, there are very few people that can do what he can do. So uh, I don't think it'll be a problem for him at all. Um, but Lad McConkey uh, was the one of the Bulldogs that really stole the show, had an incredible day. Um, I've seen mocks with him in the first round. So this wide receiver group is all over the place. I'm sure there are a ton of different boards out there with a ton of different rankings. But uh, Lad McConkey had an incredible day, showed off what he's best known for, which is just doing everything very cleanly, uh, whether that's route running or catching every ball that comes towards him or um, just playing in a straight line. I, If you look up his gauntlet drill, it's just remarkable how down the line he was that entire time catching every pass and being laser focused on that. So very impressive. And then the offensive tackle, uh, Amarius Mims, just a specimen of a human. Uh, there are so many tackles in this group, and um, I'm sure between – they're like top six guys. Uh, I can't even think of all the different names uh, um, that will probably go in the first round, but I think Amarius Mims will be one of them. So tons of offensive tackles to pick from. Amarius Mims is a guy that I think could be a 10-year starter in the NFL because his physical ability is – obvious um it's just uh you know drilling down some of the finer points which is uh pretty easy to do when you got the frame that he's got so uh definitely a great day for him uh two guys on or three guys on the defensive side of the ball Javon Bullard uh and Kamari Lassiter had incredible days both of them showed off um a lot of the actual football ability they had they Tested really well, no doubt about that. Kamari Lasseter had the best three-cone drill in the entire um, draft process, but um, in the ball drills, that's really where they shined. Everything looked so smooth. Everything looked fluid. No wasted motion, so um, ton to like about both those guys. And then Tyke Smith had a really solid day. Ran a very fast 40, I think 4-4-6 four, four, if I'm not mistaken, um, and just did a ton of really uh, good things and showed off you know, his knowledge for football, uh, for football, because he's played a ton of it. Um, uh, so for Georgia, it's the rich keep getting richer. There's no two ways about that. Um, I think Georgia will be on this list until further notice, uh, honestly, but, uh, another team that is losing a ton of guys sent the most guys to the combine in a very, very long time is the Michigan Wolverines. And I think, uh, they had a really, really solid day, not necessarily, kind of up and down with some of their guys, but at the end of the day, I think a lot of their guys made a ton of money, which is the ultimate goal here. So uh, J.J. McCarthy was the talk of the town. Obviously, he, with the top three quarterbacks out, I think he played himself into the quarterback four role, or at least that's what the people making the mock draft seem to think. So um, I'm going to roll with them for the time being. Uh, and then their wide receivers, Roman Wilson, uh, did their th uh, did his thing. He showed off his ability. Cornelius Johnson had a solid day. I think will probably be a third day pick, but uh, did a ton of really good things and showed off his ability. And then Blake Corum did what he expected to do. He uh, is forceful. Um, twenty seven reps of two twenty five on bench is uh, horrifying for a guy that size, but um, he's a beast. So there's no two ways about that. And then. On the defensive side of the ball, you had Mike Sandristrill, uh, perfect workout. Um, when you look at the ball drills and you watch him in particular, everything is perfect. Uh, it's hard to find a flaw um, in this kid, and uh, I think whoever gets him is going to have a starting nickel from day one, and he is going to play really, really good football for you. So everyone should be excited about that. And then Chris Jenkins, the defensive tackle, really had a solid day showed his uh, athletic ability and probably um, played himself up a couple around because of the need that some teams have for defensive tackles and uh, um, the number of defensive tackles that will go a little bit earlier with some teams wanting to wait until the third day. I think Chris Jenkins is a, a guy that you could pick up a little later in the draft that would help your team immensely right away. And then finally, another team that was at the top of the world in college football a year ago, Washington. Um, Michael Penix... Uh, kind of led this group, obviously, had a good day, uh, showed off his ability, can really spin that ball, has huge hands, can, uh, that spiral is 
a thing of beauty. Um, but I think he's probably sitting at quarterback five right now. It's hard to tell, I'm sure, between him and Bo Nix. There are a lot of different iterations of that order, but um, I think he had a really good day. He did everything that he could have done. Um, and then the receivers had an incredible day, uh, whether it was Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan had a solid day, but Roma Dunsey really stole the show. Uh, he did everything just at an elite level, especially for his size. Um, I don't know if some of you saw that clip of him staying out on the field to do the three-cone drill because he refused to leave before he got a 6-6. Six -six. Um, it just shows you the type of guy he is, and I'm sure there were scouts out there that absolutely loved to see that because... The dudes that stay after practice are the dudes that get to the Hall of Fame, right? So uh, definitely a good sign for him. I think there are plenty of people that have him as wide receiver one. I'm sure if you go around uh, different front offices, you will find any order of him, Malik Neighbors, and Marvin Harrison Jr. you could imagine. So I don't think there's any um, big separation between that group. Um, and then some under-the-radar guys, Devin Culp, uh, the tight end, had a remarkable day, ran a 4.47 at tight end, which is just insane. And then Roger Rosengarten, uh, Roser Garter, uh, had a very, very good day. Troy Fatanu as well, uh, two offensive tackles that in this offensive tackle class are uh, among some of the best. So um, tons to like about this Washington group. And then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Braylon Trice had a really, really good day. Um, Ulo Foscio had a really, really good day as well. Um, both of them showed their athletic ability, which was f on full display if you watch Washington throughout last year. Um, so I think both those guys, whether it's day two or um, day three, I think they can come in and really surprise some people and be uh, contributors pretty quickly for a team. Um, I know these all, all these teams were kind of the obvious teams, you know, the I think five of the top six teams from a year ago, which makes sense, but uh, it definitely does help these teams in recruiting when you can go into people's houses and say, look at our guy break the 40-yard dash, or look at our guy go top five after uh, balling out at the combine. Uh, tons to work with in the recruiting world after uh, the combine, so those teams really, really helped themselves. They did a ton of really good things, and I'm sure they will be capitalizing off that in the recruiting show going forward. Um, but we're going to take another break here and we come back. We're going to talk position coaches, some guys that you might not know the names of um, that either took over for someone that needs to um, fill big shoes or uh, just needs to deliver in a year that their team has a chance to really strike. So we will get into all of that right after this. 